Today we go head to head with two of Jeep's most talked about engines, the solid 4.0 liter versus the 2008 3.8 liter. Don't pick yet, you might change your mind. Hey, welcome to Truck U. Today in the shop, we have got a battle of Jeeps, so to speak. Alongside of me, I've got a 2001 TJ. Now, this thing has a whopping 190 horsepower and about 235 foot-pounds of torque. It doesn't sound like a lot, but believe it or not, a lot of people tell you that this Jeep will outperform that one. Yeah, this is a 2008 JK with the 3.8. Now, I own one of these. It's four-door, so I can say this, right? I can make the jokes if I want to, but <laughs> 202 horsepower, 237 foot-pounds of torque, and... As far as the performance goes, a lot of people will tell you that this engine is a little, what am I thinking, somewhat less than stellar, right? I think you're being kind. It's a little lacking, to say the least. I'm trying to keep it clean for the families. Where well, the downside is, is the, with the torque curve, really, it comes in much lower on this Jeep, which is a good thing because when you're trailing or going through trails, you're riding around, when you hit the throttle, you want it to be able to get up and go, and that thing just doesn't go anywhere. No, it doesn't. All right, so that being said, we got a little work to do to both of them. I think we're going to start on yours, right? Yeah, if you come under the hood of this TJ, we'll show you guys where we have gone and where we're going, and I think it's going to make a, an even better uh, performer out of this thing. Why are we starting on yours? Did you win the coin toss or something Always. that I don't know about? So the first order of business for our 4.0 liter engine was to go ahead and yank the head off. I know you're thinking it's a rather ambitious job, but it's one that was necessary to do because basically our valve seals were leaking. And the reason we know that is if the Jeep would sit for a little while, you go to fire it up and it would smoke and it was a situation that kept recurring. It wasn't going away, so it needed to be addressed. So we've got the head off. We took it down to a local machine shop and had them not only deck the head on the back side, but go ahead and put new valve seals in and make sure that the valves all sealed up, they didn't leak. Now, if you look at the back side, you can see we didn't really re remove much material. It was just enough to get it nice and flat. We weren't looking at up compression to get more power. We just wanted to seal when we go ahead, and go ahead and put it back on. Now, with the head all ready to go, we got to make sure that we use a good quality gasket so we don't have to go through all this trouble again. So we took the one from Felpro, their Permatorque SD, to make sure that this thing stays on. It's like you say all the time, that's a lot of work. So why would we do all that and then put just a regular gasket right. in there? Bruno's always like, let's put the best possible gasket in there that we can. That way we don't have to do all this work again. The SD stands for severe duty, and it's probably what's going to be going on with this particular vehicle. You know, you take a look at this, you've got the print of seal that's pressed in all the way around there, strategically located to make an even better seal. You have got the stainless steel combustion armor right here, and it's hot pressed in to the core. And the core is thicker, stainless steel rings are going to prevent the blow by. You've just got a lot of science, a lot of research and development, a lot of dudes in white coats in the back room putting a lot of time into making a gasket like this. Yeah, we'll make sure that you don't get blow by, that these rings will stay nice and uh, sound. They won't get any detonation where you're going to get any blow by, any kind of issues going on. And that head will stay in place and hopefully we'll never have to take it off again. All right, well, this is ready, dude. You got that one. Why Why do I this is yours. I'll get this, you get that. Oh, that did not work <laughs> out so well for me, actually. <laughs> like that. Remember how light that lithium battery was? I'd like to work that technology into this. Yeah, not so much. Hey, Matt, I don't know if you mentioned, but with this Felpro gasket, the solid steel core material is like 25% thicker than normal, and that's going to further increase the radial strength. So that's cool. All right. There it is. So we fit this cylinder head with a brand new set of valve stem seals. That is done. We've got a Felpro gasket underneath and the cylinder head clamped down. Now the guys at 505 Performance set us a brand new set of head studs. And that's something you need to do is replace those studs when you take the cylinder head off. This way you're gonna get the proper torque spec and this thing's gonna be all sealed up. Now 505 Performance also hooked us up with a brand new set of their Pro Rock Series aluminum rocker arms. And these things are a significant upgrade over production. Now these are roller rockers, so they got this little roller here and that's going to roll up on top of the valve. That's nice because in the stock ones right there it's just flat and that's slapping up and down and you get a lot more friction with that. Also, look at the design on this, it's a lot stronger. Over here in the stock, 
you got a lot of wear and tear in the fulcrum area right there. That's where a lot of your problems come from. And the guys at 505 Performance have also done a lot of independent testing as well. And they're showing some pretty impressive numbers. Yeah, their testing has shown an increase in power in terms of horsepower of 25 as well as torque, 25 foot-pounds of torque, which is really significant. So not only are you getting a performance gain, but you're getting a whole lot more dependability and durability because of this roller design. You know what, you can put these on in less than an hour or two with no modification, so that's nice. And let's be honest, they look really cool, which scores extra points for you, I know that. Hey, that being said, we need to go to break, but when we come back, it's time to supercharge the JK. After doing a body lift on your truck, you may notice that you have a gap between the frame and the bed. Create a clean backdrop for your wheels by installing a body gap filler set from LMC Truck. To install the kit, center the body gap filler in the rear wheel well on top of the flange and drill through the body gap filler and flange. You'll need a drill with a quarter inch drill bit to complete the job. Once the hole is made, insert the included plastic retainer through the body gap filler into the wheel well. Keep the body gap snug and continue drilling out the rest of the holes. Work from the center out on each side of the body gap and trim off the excess material. Each piece is made of 3 16 industrial rubber, so it's extremely durable. In a few minutes, the gap is gone and the wheel well looks stock again. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. Restore, maintain, and customize your truck with parts and accessories from LMC Truck. Hey, welcome back. We've got a lot of work done on that TJ so far. We've got a lot of work left to go, but it's time to shift gears a little bit and put our focus on this JK, man. Now this thing, let's face it, it's a bit of a dog. We've got an easy way to pick it up though, man, and that is with this supercharger kit we got from the guys at Sprintex, man. It should really bring it to life. Look at this box, man. It's like Christmas around here in the shop. I love it. I like Christmas. Ooh, look, there's a note. Matt, enjoy. Keep an eye on Bruno, Sprint Texas. My reputation right. precedes me all the like way to Australia. Guys. All right, look at that. Instructions, pack and slip. Look at this. Oh, oh, pow. Look at that. It's like I've been a good boy all year, and I'm finally getting a payoff for it. Matt, you know? I'm digging the unbridled enthusiasm, but you got to leave some of that stuff in the box because we got to get some of this stuff off before be we back. can start putting it in. Right. Here. Hold on to this, man. One of the nice things about the supercharger kit from Sprintex is it works with a lot of the factory stuff. You don't have to make any modifications to the hood, for say. You don't need a custom air box or custom set of headers. It's all set up to work with the factory stuff. So not only does that save you a lot of money, but it saves you a lot of time and effort as well. Man, it's all inclusive. That's going to sit right there. I'm liking it. So with our intake manifold out of the way, now we have access to our fuel rail, which we need to pull out. Reason being is we need to upgrade our injectors and we got a brand new set from Sprintex. They're going to be able to deliver more fuel so we can handle the more boost pressure and add to this uh, engine. Now, one of the things we're going to have an issue with is some clearance, but you follow the directions, it tells you an easy fix. All we need to do is go ahead is once we get these new injectors in place is we're going to take this fuel rail and we're going to take it and literally swap it around from front to back. So now this little fill line here will be on the back side. We'll have clearance for our new supercharger and we've all gone ahead and taken off the valve covers because you're going to take the left and switch it with the right. And there's a reason for that. This way when we take this side valve cover and we put it on over here, we can still get to the oil fill and don't have to worry about any kind of clearance issues with our supercharger. You gotta love the attention to detail here from the guys at Sprintex. Take the injectors, for instance. The old ones look a lot like the new ones. And at first glance, you might accidentally put one of the old ones back in. The way you know the difference is, well, these the new ones have a little brown tab, the old ones have a green, so you can't make that mistake. All right, Matt, here you go. All right, now this is the bread and butter of the whole operation right here, the Sprintex Supercharger. And you know what? This is the screw-type charger that's going to cram all the air down into that engine, and that's what's going to be responsible for our noticeable performance gains. You know, the biggest thing we're after with this thing is to get that low-end torque. We want to move the torque curve down. Now, overall performance is great. We want more power and more torque overall, but you want to get it to a point where you need it, and that's usable. So if you look at the graph right here, now this is going to be our, our dyno sheet. Look at the torque curve. I mean, it pretty much goes straight up right at 
at idle. And that's the whole idea. From idle to 1900 RPM, this thing is just going to jump off the ground. And that's the whole idea. This Jeep's been lacking that all along, and this Sprintex Supercharger is going to bring this thing right to life. Now, if we're talking about real numbers, that's what is really impressive about the whole thing is because at 1900 RPMs, you're going to have access to 90% of your usable torque. That is so cool. Now, think about it. In the stock configuration, you had 100% of your usable torque at 4150 RPM. Now, that's going to back down to 3150 with the new system in that. So, all that usable torque is all coming in much earlier. Yeah, it's great because we're getting that more torque, we're getting more horsepower, but we're also getting a side benefit of getting an increased fuel economy. Now, if you're driving this thing down the highway, like you're going to have to do from time to time, right? Yeah. And you're running a bigger tire like most people who do who run a Jeep like this, you're going to get an increase in fuel mileage, and that's always a nice added little perk. We need to go to break right now, but that'll give us a couple of minutes to button up a few loose ends right here, and then we can get back to work on your Jeep. A minute or two we're going to need. Maybe three. This segment of Truck U is brought to you by Schumacher Electric Corporation. Experience, ingenuity, and excellence in battery maintenance. Welcome back to Truck U. So if you're familiar with Jeeps at all, or off-road events, or anything cool, you've heard the name Poison Spider Customs. They make some of the coolest stuff on the planet. What you may not have known is the fact that Poison Spider can rig up a full roll cage kit for you, whether you've got a Jeep like this or any other Jeep, and they can do it. You can save a lot of time, a lot of money, and they'll make your life a lot easier. Yeah, if you're a fabricator, anytime you try and take on a new project, let's face it, it usually doesn't turn out the way you'd want it to. And you're also going to have a lot of scrap and you're going to have a lot of mistakes. Well, Poison Spider gets rid of all of that for you. <laughs> they do take care of all the guesswork. They give you everything you need to fully assemble a roll cage like this. And what the great thing about it is they're the only ones out there doing a CNC laser cut and laser notched kit like this. Now, if you look right here, there's no notching required. You don't have to go ahead and do any fitting of your own. They go the extra mile, too, is they make things easier when it comes to assembling it all because you've got laser etched numbers. So like this is number six. So you take this tube at the intersect point, boom, they tell you right where to put it. You go ahead and tack it in place. It doesn't get any easier because they take all the guesswork out of it for you. It's like putting a little puzzle together, you know? It's kind of fun if you look at it like that. Like I said, it's all CNC bent, DOM tubing. Life is good and we're saving time. All right, man, now we're at the point where we can start putting the puzzle together. So the first step in our Poison Spider roll cage assembly is to go ahead and put in the sheet metal A-pillar. What's nice about this is you're able to attach to the floor so it'll be nice and structurally sound, but you don't have to cut through the dash, take out this vent, or ruin this speaker. And these little notches out here, not only do they look cool, but they're functional. You got these little screws here in your dash. You don't have to take out your entire roll cage if you need to get inside here. Now, once you move on past this A-pillar, you've got your A, B, and C tubes. So you get either side in place, and then we use a ratchet strap to kind of suck everything together, and then we can tack all everything in place. You mentioned before that the tubes are pre-etched and that lets you know exactly where they're going to meet up so it makes it nice and easy. And these things are all laser notched. I mean, take a look at this. If you get up in here close, there's three tubes all coming together right here and there's virtually zero gap. I mean, this thing is really, really precise and all you have to do is follow the directions piece by piece and it goes right together. Here are two more nice things. You think about it, in the stock Jeep, yeah, the bulk of the cage is from here back. Sure, it goes across, but really the support in the front is nothing more than the you know the housing for the windshield so that's pretty good but this is way way better you get a good strong roll cage all the way around and the other thing is you can buy it in the pieces like we did today and put it together or if you don't want to do that work you can contact the guys at poison spider customs they'll weld it all together for you put it on a pallet and ship it to you you drop it in and tighten it up with a couple of bolts yeah but what fun would that be right i mean come on uh, you know i don't know so it depends on timing i guess yeah i figured that's the option you'd go for I can't believe how nicely this all came together. You know what I like about it? Like these little bends right here, they're very subtle, but they look fantastic. Yeah, the guys at Poison Spider really want the extra mile in sending us this kit because, you know, the little things made all the difference. You've got all the laser etching for the intersect points, the laser notches, so all the tubes fit together nicely. All it was was plugging the pieces in the right spot and doing a bunch of tack welds to get it all laid out. Now that it's all configured, we need to pull this thing out of the way so we can get full welds all the way around. And with it out of the Jeep, it's going to be a little bit easier to manipulate. I think actually we should go ahead and send this thing out the powder coat when we're done. I think it'll look great. 
Now, another thing that we noticed when we got about elbow deep into this project was the fact that the carpet in here was looking a little bit junky. It was a little beat up. Plus, we were going to be doing a lot of welding up here, and we didn't want to drop anything onto the carpet and catch anything on fire. So we yanked it out, and it's a great time to replace it with something new. And this is a great thing to do it with. It's the bed tread from Bed Rug. And what this helps us do is accomplish er, that sprayed in kind of look, you know, without all the labor that's involved in doing that. This is a nice system. Yeah, with the spray and look or the spray and finish has actually got a ton of labor involved in terms of prep, so we avoid all that. And this goes in really easily. It simply Velcros in. You can do it with the seats in and with the console in, which is nice, and it's fully removable. Now, this is 100% waterproof. It's not going to saturate and soak up any water or mildew, so you don't have to worry about any of that. And plus, like, hey, give them a little demo here. Yeah, man. Let's I'm say on you're it. out playing in the mud and you spill a little, you bring some inside with you. You can simply wash it out. Look at all this oh, stuff. Look at that. I spilled my right drink. Out. Whatever will I do? <laughs> and it dries quickly, which is a really nice bonus. Pow, look at that. That is great. Now, what is this stuff though, right? Here, I'll show you. It's a quarter inch polypropylene foam. And there's a couple other benefits to go along with this, like sound deadening and heat resistance too, especially where it goes over the transmission tunnel right there. You got some other heat shields, additional ones that are inside the layers right there. So, bed tread from bed rug. It's a nice way to accomplish a great look and make it nice and easy to clean. Well, because it fits so nice, you've got a three-piece kit up front, you got four pieces in the back. They're all custom molded and laser cut to fit right, and that's what it's all about. Getting the right fit makes the finished product look a whole lot better. You mentioned the Velcro, right? Yeah. Boom. Done. Stuck on there. Look at that. Welcome back to Truck U. You know, LMC Truck is where you need to go when you're looking for any piece or part, pretty much anything you need on a vehicle from Ford, Chevy, Dodge, going back to the 1940s, whether it's hard to find, whatever. I mean, this is a good example right here. This is the transmission shift linkage from GMC trucks for a couple different models from the 60s up through the mid 80s. You guys know the deal. Get yourself a catalog from LMC Truck. You can see you've got expanded diagrams with descriptions with all the part numbers for all the kits, all the parts and pieces you need. If you can't find it in a catalog, you can easily find Find it online and they'll get it to you quick at LMC Truck. This is the Rhino 100 ST lightweight portable welder from Rhino Welders. Now this is the smallest and most lightweight welder in their entire line of industrial welders. So if you're going to open up a shop and do a bunch of custom fabrication, obviously you'd want to go something a little bit more heavy duty than this. But if you just want a lightweight portable welder in your garage that can tackle little jobs that pop up here and there, this is perfect. Yeah, while this thing's small in size, it does pack a pretty powerful punch. You can handle jobs from 10 to 95 amps. It's got everything you need because you can do stick welding, you can do your TIG welding. It's got all the parts and pieces. You can plug into a 110, got a nice carrying case, and the whole thing weighs less than 10 pounds, which makes it really convenient. You can have anything can pop up, you know, something, a little fence post or some of the fencing breaks apart and you want to stick that back together. A lot of times you'll want to weld the chain to the fence or a lock to the chain, right. you know, to keep everything yeah. secure like that. It's perfect for a little job like that. So, Basically, you got about a million different things you can do with a little lightweight welder like this. It's the Rhino 100 ST. Now, we've all heard the expression slippery when wet, right? Yes, we have. Today, it's all about being slippery when dry. This is slip plate from Superior Graphite, and what it is, it's a dry film graphite lubricant. Yeah, when using slip plate, let's say with these uh, leaf springs, for instance, what you're doing is you're creating a slippery non-stick surface. Now, by putting a graphite coating on it, what you're doing is you're going to lubricate these so they won't bind or they won't rust out or they won't creak. Now, in traditional means, when you use an oil or a grease, it'll attract a bunch of dirt and debris right. and it'll wear off over time. With the slip plate, it's hydrophobic, so it resists water that maintain that slippery lubricity to them. Yep. And you know what? It's a dry feel to it. You won't have any of that grease rubbing off on you or attracting dirt to it. Since since it's dry, viscosity is not an issue and you can use it in high heat applications. So if it needs to turn, twist, roll, or slide, it's a great job for slip plate. This is the Lanair MX200 waste oil heater and we've been talking about how you can make potentially free heat in your shop and that's great. But today we want to focus more on some of the positive environmental aspects of a machine like this. Well, first of all, the impact on your business can be big because you're going to get reduced costs in terms of energy, transportation, and as well as heat. But when you talk about the green effect that you're going to get from using something like this, it's substantial because instead of improperly disposing of your waste oil, you're going to do it the right way. Right. And you're going to be able to save a buck along the way so you're saving the earth and your pocketbook, which is always a good thing. You know, it's not a bad thing if you can combine all the elements of recycling and keeping things nice and clean and being environmentally friendly and saving money. What's wrong with that? That's what it's all about with the MX. 200 waste oil heater from Linair. 
For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit our website at truckutv.com. Welcome back. We got the supercharger taken care of in the JK. Now it's time to come back over here to the TJ and upgrade the exhaust. And we're going to do that with a TFX Performance Exhaust System from Pace Setter Performance. It's a real nice system that's easy to install. It goes from the cat back, so that's good. It utilizes all the factory hangers and everything, so there's nothing else to buy. It's all part of it. The only thing I have to do is get the old stuff out of the way. This TFX performance exhaust system is made with 16 gauge aluminized mandrel bent tubing for maximum flow efficiency. Then you got a fully welded muffler and this chromed stainless tip will never rust or corrode. And it gives it a nice powerful mellow tone. It sounds like it's raining pretty good out there so the test drive could get interesting real quick. It is always fun to come out and play once the work is done. This Sprintech supercharger is a blast. I gotta tell you, this thing is dialed in. Now look, one thing to keep in mind, when you do a supercharger, it needs to have the proper tune. Sprintex includes the Hypertech tuner that does everything the Hypertech tuners do, plus it loads the supercharger tune. All right, man, we can't play all day. We've gotta get back to the shop. We got one thing left on that TJ. We have been working hard today. We've got a lot of stuff done in our last order of business is to put a little light on the front of this TJ. And the way we're going to do that is with a laser star 10 watt 20 LED light bar. And this should really light up the sky. Now, when you say a little bit of light, you're talking a ridiculous amount of light. Look at this. This is awesome. So you take a look. You got the floodlights on the outside, the spots in the middle. We're lighting everything up on the side, lighting it up all the way down. And what's really cool is how easy this thing mounts. So you put these little mounts on here, right? And they slide in. There's four of those and you can mount it pretty much wherever you want to slide it around and then lock it down but you can move it up and down too when you're doing that so really you can light up pretty much anywhere you want to go yeah and these things are dust proof they're submersible in water up to nine feet man let's face it we put this jeep nine feet in water the last thing we should be worrying about is the light <laughs> and you know what while they're putting out a lot of light there's a very little draw and these things last a long time because they're not overdriving their leds i'm talking five years and seven months of continuous light like that that is that crazy Really cool. Now all we have to do is figure out where we want to mount this thing. That's all the time we have this week. We'll see you guys next time around. I'm thinking somewhere in this vicinity. Don't drop it this time. You want it there? No, or up like, here. Yeah. yeah, let's do this, dude. Looks like a big eyebrow up top. I like it. <laughs>